Hey there, I hope everybody's doing well. So today I want to talk about everyone's least favorite uh, part of the uh, analog process. That is, unless you have a good old fashioned traditional wet darkroom at your disposal, you will need to digitize your negatives. You will need to get your negatives from here onto here or some, you know, some other digital recording medium. Um, this is the fun part, getting up to here, getting, once you've got your negatives in the sleeve, you have completed the fun part, <laughs> you, at least up, up to this point. You, digitizing is a hassle, nobody likes it, it is a pain in the neck, uh, it is the least uh, fun and most aggravating aspect of the hybrid analog digital process. So I've been using the Nikon ES2 film digitizing adapter and I'm going to talk a little about it today. Um, Nikon isn't paying me, they're not giving me a nickel for this, but given their current financial straits, they're really not, not, not in any position to be spending excess money on advertising nowadays. Um, so what the heck, let's uh, give them a freebie. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I haven't been enjoying Nikon products for a while. So uh, sure, I'll help the company out. Um, but in all seriousness, I really do like the ES2 setup and it has two particular advantages over other digitizing um, solutions which I've seen people talk about on YouTube. And so I want to talk about those two advantages right now. First of all, the, uh, um, I've done a couple other videos on the ES2. I did an unboxing video that just sort of shows you what's in the package when you get it. Um, and then uh, I also did a, a very short, it's only like three or four minutes long, a video about how I use the setup once it's all set up. Um, and it's, it's incredibly easy, it's incredibly simple. Uh, please have a look at those two videos uh, for some background on the system. Um, and now I'm gonna, I mean, in those two videos, I show you what you get and how to use it. Um, now I'm gonna show you what the advantage is. And the advantage is simple. For, so, uh, brief rundown, the ES2 negative digitizing adapter is essentially a slide duplicating setup or modif a modified slide duplicating setup built to, um, uh, built purpose built for a couple of lenses or, or for several lenses um, the system is built for the 60 millimeter micro lens uh, this is the older version the AFD version uh, uh, it is also compatible with the newer 60 millimeter micro lens which I believe is the AFS series I think um, I don't have that one I got the older one and essentially what this is, is an extended step down ring. So it's, this head takes a 62 millimeter filter. So I'm gonna screw this on here and it's gonna step down so that now a 52 millimeter um, uh, filter size uh, accessory can, can attach. And that accessory is gonna be this right here. This is, this, uh, this is the diffuser which holds the negative, uh, the negative carrier. And that diffuser um, is, is what you point at your light source. And you just screw this on um, to the, let's see if we can get this, here we go, and yeah, all right, so there, okay, so you screw that on, and my experience is with this 60 millimeter lens, you can't back it up to close, to, to, to as far as it'll go, you gotta ease back a little bit, just a wee bit, um, in order to, um, to, to be consistent with the lens's um, close focusing ability. Um, and with this lens, you're always gonna get a little, bit of the, uh, a little bit of the frame in there. You cannot focus this thing close enough to get a frameless center crop of your image. You're gonna get some frame in there. So for example, um, if I'm using the D700, which is a 12 megapixel camera, by the time I crop out the frame, you know, you're talking about a resulting image of 10 to 11 megapixels, roughly. Um, so you insert this, obviously you put your, you know, your, your negatives in here, um, and you insert it into the um, digitizing adapter like so. All right, now you're gonna mount this up on a tripod and stick it towards a window, pointing at a window. And the reason you're gonna point it at a window is because of the first major advantage of this system. You can use natural sunlight as your light source. Um, I mean, in theory, you could use any light. I mean, this, this diffuser could, I mean, you could shine a flashlight on it if you want to, I suppose, but 
you know, why. Um, you can use natural sunlight as your light source. Natural sunlight is the best light source, period. Um, with this setup on a tripod, pointing out your window, you don't need to worry about uh, your color temperature. You don't need to worry about finding a, a nice um, light source that doesn't have um, you know, bright spots and dim spots. Uh, you don't have to worry about the evenness of your light source. You don't need to worry about um, the quality of the light. Uh, it's just, all of that is eliminated. All of those troubles are gone. You're just using natural sunlight out the window. Um, it is, it's the simplest and the best. Um, it, it, it is both of those things. Um, so that's advantage number one. Advantage number two is that this setup will hold the negative perfectly parallel to the recording sensor. That is, when you're digitizing, when you're, when you're doing, you know, um, um, slide copying, or basically the, the, the modern equivalent of slide copying, which is what this is, um, digitizing in this manner, you've, the, the object that you're focusing on, which is the negative, must be completely parallel, perfectly parallel to the recording plane. This plane and this plane must be absolutely parallel. Otherwise, if this one's off a little bit, then the edges are going to be out of focus. You'll have, you'll have good focus in the center, but, you, but the, the, the sides of the negative are going to be out of focus. Um, they, also, they could also give um, a distorted perspective as well. So, uh, although the out of focus is the main issue. I mean, even at I me, mean, I shoot, I always set my lens for f16. Uh, because that's two stops in from maximum, or rather two stops in from minimum aperture. Um, so uh, that, that should avoid diffraction while giving me decent depth of field. So even with, with maximum depth of field, even if I were to sh shut this thing down to um, you know, F32, uh, mac what, I mean, what's your maximum depth of field at this, dif at this distance? You know, a couple of millimeters, a couple of millimeters, maybe, maybe. So I mean, if, you're, if your recording sensor is not parallel with the the object being recorded if it's off then you're you're going to get blurry sides um I, I don't see any way around that um and um anyway and, and even if you're you're still within an acceptable zone of depth of field um you, you're, you're going to get distortion in your perspective so that's absolutely critical and that is that that's eliminated i mean right uh, this this particular setup holds the negative perfectly parallel to the sensor um, and it uses natural sunlight I mean it, it could not be easier it could not be, be more simple um, I just uh, I've been using excuse me hold on a second, let's do this I've been using this system now for I don't know how long check the date on my earlier videos and that'll tell you but um, uh, it's been a little while and I am very happy with the results it is incredibly simple to break down and put together it um, uh, it, it just it, it could not be more convenient. I guess my main complaint is it's not cheap. I can't remember what these things cost, um, but it's I think it's under two hundred dollars. But still, even like one hundred fifty bucks for a bunch of plastic is you know it's like come on really. But nonetheless, I mean, if, given the, given the um, you know don't think of it in terms of you know you're just buying some injection molded plastic that you're being overcharged for. Um, instead, think of peace of mind. Peace of mind is a commodity worth paying for. It really is. So, given the fact that this thing works, um, here's how it attaches to the 40 millimeter lens. Um, and in, on the 40 millimeter lens, you can uh, bring this in pretty close. And at, at the closest focusing distance, you will get um, a center crop um, without any frame lines in it, or if you want, you know, if you want to record the frame to make sure you're getting all the picture, like every bit of it, then you just, you know, you push it out a little farther. Uh, if you don't want the frame in your image, then you just pull it in a little closer. And with, with this lens, at the, if you pull it in as close as possible, it will focus right here, um, and it will it will crop in on the image such that um, you're going to eliminate the corners and the sides, and um, and you can record it without any without any. Um, of the, uh, the plastic um, framing in the in the shot. So depending upon how you want to edit, what you want to do, you know, are you trying to maximize your megapixels? Are you trying to um, you know make sure that you you get all of the image in the in the in the recording? Thing? You know that's up to you whether you shoot from here or here. That's that's your choice. 
Um, but it's really easy, and as I mentioned, it's you know I, I know it's it seems overpriced for just a you know a handful of injected uh, injection molded plastic parts, but it's peace of mind, man, it's peace of mind. Um, you, you you've just I, I I can't you know when I watch these other videos by these other YouTubers that are digitizing and they're sticking their um, their DSLRs or their their Sony mirrorless cameras up on copy stands, um, and now now they have to worry about obsessing over getting a good light source um, and um, and maintaining a perfectly parallel relationship between the recording sensor and the, and the negative. And that's just t two headaches that you eliminate with this particular setup. Um, I think those are big advantages and I think they're worth mentioning. And even though I'm not getting a nickel from Nikon, um, uh, I, I hope the company recovers and does better and I really hope they, <laughs> they, they stay in business um, and uh, you know keep making it. You know, don't, don't drop the F6. <laughs> Whatever you do, please don't drop the F6. Maybe one day I'll afford one. Um, okay, so that's all I've got for you today. I hope that this was uh, helpful and informative. And if so, please do like and subscribe and check out the links below. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks now. Take care. Bye-bye.